Hey what's up guys, this is Oakley and doing some more battles. As I said in the last video, I'm going on a week, well we're entering a long weekend, I hope you guys have a long weekend as well. So I'm going to be doing a lot of fun stuff and I figured I'd record a couple games, get them out too. Anyways, I'm going to be playing as Rome, you don't see me play as Rome too often. Uh, I guess I'll get more into it, they actually have a huge unit diversity that I think I should try and explore some more. Anyways, my opponent is going to be Parthia. And I know that a lot of Parthian players have lately been relying on heavy cataphract builds and so I'm that's what I knew coming into this battle my opponent was going to bring, so I tried to build an army that would effectively counter that. So you'll see kind of what I recommend doing if you're playing against Parthia, and if you suspect they're going to bring Cataphracts. So anyways, uh, you can tell him I, uh, I love the smell of Cataphracts in the morning. Typed him that before the battle started, uh, and he just said, uh, he just drew a heart because I'm... He, he knew I knew what he was doing. Anyways, you can see I was correct. It's a full Royal Cataphract army backed up by um, Sarmatian Horse Archers. So, okay, let's go about how I think I'm going to counter this. Um, the components on my army. I have six armored legionaries. They're going to be strong. They're going to be able to hold. That's going to be basically the backbone of my army. Um, I don't expect them to chase down his units, but when his units charge, I need a stable core, and that's going to be my legionaries. Um, so that's going to be the core of my army, and on top of that, I'm going to start adding in stuff that can counter his, his units. So I know... These armies typically come with, um, the, you'll usually see those sluices bring elephants or camel archers to have a morale debuff. So what I brought is uh, what, uh, two slinger units in order to combat his ranged units. And then two velites. Now you might wonder why would I bring velites because you know I'm not going to be doing much skirmishing with his units up front. I'm not going to be able to outrange him. The reason I brought velites is because they're going to be sitting behind my main line. You'll see that um, velites and units similar to them have pretty high armor piercing uh, abilities and so what I'm waiting to do is waiting for his cataphracts to get tangled on some of my units and then unleash with my velite so that's my thinking behind that um, additionally I've brought two triari units so they're gonna be armored units that can go out in the line of fire and push back his forces then I have three of those gladiators they're gonna be strong attack spearmen who are gonna be waiting in the back I don't want them exposed because they have low armor, they're susceptible to a charge or susceptible to horse archers. So they're kind of a reserve spearman unit that kind of like the Velites are going to wait till the engagement uh, is in effect. And the reason I brought elephants was additionally to break up any of his cataphract charges. If he comes in with a large cataphract blob and it gets bogged down, I know his units are going to hold out for a while. And that's when I'm going to need my gladiators, my Velites, and my elephants all in combination are going to be aimed at breaking that blob before it can do significant damage. And see, my opponent is going to start off by engaging with his horse archers. So what I would say you should do is go ahead and find a favorable pos favorable position like this. And then what you need to do is get your um, your range unit, so presumably slingers, to start targeting his men. Put on shots. Don't let him just sit there and exchange fire. Every time you're going to shoot, make sure you're moving up our other units. Because what it does is it forces his units to run away like this. So his units are running away. In the meantime, my guys are just sitting here stationary, plugging away, shooting at his forces. Um... So you can see right there, I took a couple um, shots at his guys. He had to retreat, and he did no damage to me. So every time he comes in for a strike, let him get close and uh, make a move. Move your infantry up, move your cavalry up the flanks, do anything to force him back. That way he's always moving back and forth while your slingers are going to work. So you can see right there, I, took, I did some damage to his men. He's going to come in for another attack. You can see what I'm talking about when I talk about my my armored core of legionaries. I just use them, push them forward. They, there's, of course, no chance they're going to engage with his units, but it's enough to force them back. Any shots he puts on me are basically going to do insignificant amounts of damage. And I'm also trying to use the hill, the terrain on my left side, to hide my units and try and be able to get the drop on his guys. I um, found that two of his units here were... Um, drawn apart from his army so what I'm going to do is try and engage them here and push a wedge in the center with uh, my slingers and my spears you know he can retreat in time he's going to pull off some cataphracts so that's no time to attack what it has done however is expose this unit here so I'm going to have a two on one and what I'm going to do is move my general over here try and force them back you can see I'm going to use any unit necessary to force those guys back I don't want them getting steady shots on my men and uh, yeah you're going to see the results are going to start racking up I'm going to turn my other Balearic unit against him. My general's going to be moving back here. His Sarmatian guys are already at 50. You can see the Slingers do heavy, heavy amounts of damage. And uh, he's going to be moving some Cataphracts in a little closer. Most of his units are coming back, but you can see my general's chasing them off. And um, yeah, it's pretty effective. Again, units on the left are hidden. Elephants are staying out of archer range. And um, yeah, it's just uh, slow and steady. 
Uh, basically, because he has cavalry, he has to dictate the game. There's no way I can chase down his horse, his whole units. So in his mind, what he's trying to do is pick off his units as much as possible. I'm going to let him try and do that, but every time he gets close, I'm going to play the game of uh, denying any advantage he might have. So I'm going to, you know, charge in with my horses and whatnot. So what I would try and do with him is probably try and move up one or two cataphract units to ward off my own cavalry, keep them from doing this to his forces and then try and get around the flanks. I would try and get a full surround. What my opponent I think is doing wrong is concentrating his cataphracts a bit too much. But uh, again, what I could do if he splits up his units is try and isolate them, turn my forces against him. And you can see here he just uh, enabled an ability that was presumably, I think, a quick reload. So I made him waste that because he's retreating and uh, he's not able to fully use that. So I'm making him waste his abilities, waste his shots, and... Uh, yeah, force him to never be able to just concentrate all fire because I think three horse archers against two of these slingers would probably do pretty well. Um, but every time I chase them off, you know, he just gets less accuracy. And, uh, you know, another round of quick reloads is going to do him in. And um, he's going to move in more cataphracts, try and force my armored units, uh, my armored horsemen back. But, uh, you know, I just retreat to again, once again, the core stability of my, uh, my inner line. And at the same time, I'm going to force these guys back with the tree area on the side and try and charge in, feign a charge with my cavalry. And you can just see <laughs> how many losses he's taken up front in the desert. Uh, I think these tactics are very effective. My opponent's starting to get the gist of it. He's going to move around the flank. So what I'm going to do is try and put more units on this side. I decide I'm going to put a heavy, um, heavy focus on the side. Velites are going to aim left. Um, my gladiators are going to go to left, my triari are going to go left, and I'm going to shift this group here. Meanwhile, my slingers are still picking off at his horse archers, and my opponent is trying to gain a favorable advantage, but I don't think he is really going to get any. Um, what I would do is try and try a, probably a complete uh, complete envelopment of my forces. He's going to try and push in here with the charge. I think he's just trying to scare my units back, try and do what I was doing to him. Um, stupidly, I didn't run my forces, but... Uh, He's going to try and take the bait and then think better of it just because I'm so close that, uh, you know, any engagement I would be able to click the attack move and he would get a face full of Pilla uh, as well as all the Velites and, you know, other units I have in the vicinity. So this is kind of what's going on. It requires a little bit of patience, a little bit of foresight in terms of knowing where to position your guys, knowing what your opponent is probably going to bring to the battle. So now that he sees he's forced my spearmen on the left, he's going to try and rebalance by going on the right. So this is something you're going to see horse armies do a lot. Um, don't overreact. Don't, uh, don't get too nervous about it. That's why I'm in this compact formation. It allows my forces to swing back and forth. And then as always, I'm going to have my core guys in the, middle, in the middle holding back his forces. He's going to spot my general, think it's a good time to engage. Um, you know, probably best he can circumvent my units here, but he goes right into my gladiators here. And he's going to decide to basically just say, fuck it, let's go ahead and engage. So what I'm going to do is start engaging with my units. You can see he can charge my core infantry all he wants. They're basically there to soak up fire. And uh, my general and my cavalry units are going to moving around the flank. And uh, yeah, he's going to get bogged down as I anticipated on these units here. They're going to throw their pillar. They're going to bog down his forces here. And usually cataphracts, if they get an outright charge of your units, will just destroy them. But because I was able to bait and kite him, I was able to get this type of engagement, which is highly favorable. You can also see all my velites and all my skirmishers are going to start raining down on his forces. I'm going to target the most juicy one of them, pop a rally, and uh, yeah, get those guys to engage there. And uh, I know I can hold them down. I know I have enough spears and enough units. I'm going around the flank with my elephants and my opponent right then and there uh, admits defeat. So you can see here how his cataphracts are just getting a face full of spears into them. So this is what I would recommend doing if you're facing cataphract army. This is what you should go ahead and do. You can see the losses suffered by myself. Uh, 121, I killed 243 of his units. I think that was very, very well. You can see his horse archers were basically nullified. They got six kills. Whereas my guys, Velites, <laughs> Velites who engaged at the end got 6 kills, and my Slingers basically got uh, 60 kills about. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this helps you fend off uh, opponents who are using similar tactics. See you guys next time.